Welcome to our Illustrator tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to create the following illustration. We are going to use the minus front option, which is part of the Pathfinder. We are going to use gradients and the um, uh, swatch color panel, as well as some effects such as blurring and drop down shadows. And obviously, there will be some techniques that I will explain as we go along um, through this tutorial. So, let's get started. To start this tutorial, we're going to use a new artboard, so go File, New, and set an artboard of 1024 by 768 pixels. We can give a title, Fish Boy, and click OK. Once we have our artboard, we can start working um, uh, our illustration. The illustration, we are going to start with some abstract shape. To create our abstract shapes, we're going to use Ellipse tool. So I'm going to click on my ellipse tool, click on the artboard. This will give us the option to set a specific size and I'm going to set 400 pixels by 400 pixels size of our ellipse. Here I have my circle. I'm going to select the um, selection tool, which is the black arrow, so I can move the shape wherever I want. I'm going to set the color and the stroke for this shape. From the toolbox below, we have two types of fillings. We have the stroke and we have the color. Um, I'm going to remove the stroke. I do not need the stroke, so I'm going to click on the stroke and then click on none. This will remove the stroke. I'm going to click on the fill and change the fill to um, a gray color. It doesn't matter if it's dark or light, this is temporary. Just to distinguish between the white and background of the artboard and the color of the shape. Now we need to remove the inner part of the shape, leaving us with a ring. To do so, I'm going to create another circle, so back to my ellipse tool. Click on the artboard and create a smaller circle, 300 by 300 pixels. Once this is created, again with the selection tool, I'm going to place this at the center of the larger circle. To remove the inner part of the circle using the small circle, we need to select both circles with the selection tool. So drag around both uh, shapes, this will select both shapes, go to window and choose the Pathfinder. From the Pathfinder, we're going to use the following option, minus front. The minus front will remove the front part covered by the small circle of the large circle and leave us with the following ring. Now, I want to create a C shape. So we're going to use the rectangle tool, cover an area on our right hand side. It doesn't matter the size of the uh, um, rectangle. Select both shapes and repeat again with Pathfinder minus front. And here we have we have our C shape. Now it's time to create the second part of our abstract shape. We're going to use once again the ellipse tool. And I'm going to click on my artboard and we're going to keep the following settings: 300 by 300 pixels and click OK. Now I need a quarter of a circle quarter part of the circle. So I'm going to make a copy of the circle. So go to edit, copy, edit, paste. With the selection tool I'm going to move the shape and cover three quarters of my circle, leaving me only with the quarter um, selected of my, of my circle here. I'm going to select both circles with the selection tool and again minus front. Once I have the quarter I can start creating um, uh, continue creating my abstract shape. I need to create a solid black um, color of the same shape and the same size. I'm going to make a copy of this um, quarter of a circle. Now instead of going always edit copy and paste, we can use a shortcut key by pressing the Alt key on our keyboard. First selecting the shape, pressing the Alt key, we can see that we have the cursor changed in double arrows, one black, one white, and with the left mouse button, we can drag, and this will automatically create our copy. I'm going to place the copy on top of the gray and select the one below. Once selected, I'm going to double click on my gray fill color in the toolbox and change it to solid black. So this will give me a solid black shadow. I'm going to move a little bit with the cursors more uh, my gray part towards the left to make it a little bit thinner. Now once this is set, to avoid moving apart the shapes, 
I'm going to group them up. Always with the selection to selected, I'm going to select both shapes, the black, the gray one, go to object and group. And this will enable us, once selected, to move the shape, the black and the gray shape, uh, always together, linked together. I'm going to make a copy of the black and gray shape once again. So I'm going to select, press my Alt key, drag, and I have my copy. I'm going to rotate this. Now to rotate the shape, always go to the upper right or upper left corner until you see the cursor changes into this band and arrow. Left mouse button and start rotating. I'm going to rotate to place this on top, matching the angle of my shape. So I'm going to use my arrow keys to be more accurate on my placing position. Okay. Another copy, so Alt select, Alt key, left mouse button, and rotate once more. And we are the arrow keys, I'm going to place uh, this on the very top of the other shapes. Once I'm ready, I'm going to group up the three shapes I've created to avoid moving them apart. So select, object, group and I'm going to apply a gradient on these three shapes so I'm going to select them from the toolbar below I have three icons none gradient and the fill solid color I'm going to click on the gradient and I'm going to um, close this we do not need the pathfinder um, on our right I have the gradient tool I'm going to extract it and place it on the artboard so it is more visible you can understand better what I'm doing by default, the gradient tool sets a black and white color and the linear type. I'm going to change linear from radial, but I'm going to keep the black and white color. I'm going to change a little bit the gradient slider, which affects the location. I'm going to push it towards the black area, white, light, white, brightness in my uh, gradient color. Once I'm ready, I'm going to click on the artboard. This is the result. Uh, which I obtained. I'm going to click on my C shape and apply the same settings and the same gradient. Once this is done, I'm going to click on my abstract shape and place it on top of my C shape. And this is the shape that I was looking for. I'm going to select both the C shape and the abstract shape, object and group. And this will enable me to treat this as a single shape. The next step is to create the reflection down below. For the time being, I'm going to put back my gradient tool its place here. Now, to create the selection, I need a copy of this shape. So again, make sure it's selected, press the Alt key, press the left mouse button, drag to make a copy. I'm going to use the transform tool and I'm going to use the free distort tool. This will change actually the perspective of how I can see my, my reflection. Once this is done, I'm going to um, set this behind the shape. So right click, arrange, send back. And I'm going to flip so I can have this uh, shape, this part of the shape on my right hand side. So to flip or um, change uh, the position of an object or transform an object, we can also go to object, transform, and we have reflect. As you can see with the preview button already, uh, I have already a preview of how my shape is uh, adjusted. It's okay, so I'm going to click okay. Once this is done, now it's time to reduce the opacity. From the option menu bar on top, the opacity is 100. I'm going to click here or click inside and set to 30%. Always make sure that the object that you are modifying is selected. Press enter and we have our reflection ready. Now it's time to change the background. First of all, I'm going to select the uh, rectangle tool and cover the whole artboard. We're going to change the color and the settings of the gradient. So I'm going to extract my gradient back to its place. And I'm going to change the following settings. First of all, I'm going to change the black color into a dark blue color. 
Now to change colors in a gradient, I'm going to use the swatch palette. Here we have um, ready customized colors. Since I want dark blue color, I'm going to double click uh, blue color, which is here, this is blue color, and change the values. I'm going to change the value of the blue color and decrease it down to 30, which gives me the dark blue color that I want. We can preview. Okay. Now we're going to drag this dark blue color just set it from the swatches panel on top of the gradient toolbox. And here I have my gradient. Now we're going to change the slider location until I reach approximately 14%, 14.7. We can click inside the location value and set 14. So we have a round figure. Once the gradient is done, I'm going to put this in its place and I'm going to place um, the abstract shape on top of the background. Therefore, I'm going to right click with the selection tool on the background and arrange, send the background back. Now it's time to place the Fisher Boy. So I'm going to my Fisher Boy vector image, I'm going to select it, edit, copy, edit, paste. I'm going to change the color of the boy, so I'm going to double click on my dark blue color and change it to white and place my fissure boy on top of the C edge. I'm going to modify a little bit, so I'm going to um, remove part of the lining rod because I want this to finish here, so I'm going to select the fissure boy again and from the toolbox I'm going to pick up the eraser tool. And I'm going to erase the unwanted part. So I can see that the lining is touching um, the reflection. Once this is ready, I'm going to use the ellipse tool, create a circle on the edge of my lining, change the color to white, and apply some blur effect. So making sure that the circle is selected, go to effect, stylize, sorry, blur, and Gaussian blur. I'm going to click preview, seems okay. Then I'm going to click on my selection tool to have a preview that it's doing well. So I have this sort of effect, such as the floater glowing on top of the water reflection touching the lining. To, final, to finalize our illustration, I'm going to put the brush and uh, I'm going to change the stroke to null and the fill color to white. And I'm going to uh, I'll make some dots to create our stars. Okay, it's fine. We have our illustration finished. Hope to see you for the next tutorial.